Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another wine a Wednesday with a Q&A that you guys have very highly requested. I had received a couple of private messages from a lot of you saying that you wanted me to do a Q&A video. This is the very first time I've ever done one on my channel. I always want to film something that you guys enjoy, so we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> if you like this video while you're watching it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are somebody that loves fashion, beauty, luxury, if you like getting ready with me videos and a little bit of like planning and journaling every now and then, then definitely hit that little red subscribe button down below. This is going to be that community and family for you. And if you aren't already, please go ahead and follow me all on my social channels. I will put all of them up on the screen somewhere here. I would love to have you come join me off YouTube as well. Now for my Q and A, I had posted on Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook um, that I was doing a Q and A and you guys have fielded your questions sort of all over the place. So I'm going to be checking my phone and um, reading off your questions one at a time. I'm sure it would have been smart for me to put them all in one document, but I didn't do that, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, first question came from Canadian Fashionista One. She said, if you could only use five products the rest of your like, life, sorry, makeup wise, what would they be along with the brand? So basically holy grail products. Okay, so for that question, oh my God, that would be so hard. Okay, so for fun, top five for sure. So Max Studio Fix Foundation, I really like it. You guys have seen from my Getting Ready With Me videos, I use that foundation all the time. So 100% that one, so that's one. Um, I would use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I find that one most consistent among all the concealers that I've tried. Uh, I would also use my L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara because that has been a long time love of mine since high school days. So definitely that one. For highlighters, I really like the Anastasia Beverly Hills. I just really like them in Pink Heart. It's one of the ones that's in the Moonchild palette, but I really gravitate towards that one. I just love the color. So that's four. And my last one, uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills, like my brow is. It's the only one. Oh no, but I do have other brow products. No, I'm still going to go with that one. Yeah, the brow is pencil and taupe, so good. Okay, the Good Love Co. asked how to style the off the shoulder trend when you're an hourglass and most tops I've seen are so boxy. I love exposed shoulders, but my waist needs to be defined. I'd also love to see a video on new makeup kits slash products based on color season. In terms of the off the shoulder trend for an hourglass figure, I agree a lot of the things nowadays are super boxy. So you have to be careful with that to make sure you don't lose your shape. But if you're looking for something that's tailored more towards an hourglass, there are a lot of wrap versions where you can get like the tie around belts for um, an hourglass shape and make sure it's cinched in that way. You also have to be careful that the stitching also makes that slight curve. So when you are looking at a product that's on a hanger, that's when you'll see a piece of clothing in its true shape. So if it doesn't make that slight indentation and curve whilst on the hanger, it won't do it on your body. Now the trend has been boxier products or boxier shapes for tops, which I don't really like myself, um, but cinching it with a belt or finding an off the shoulder top or even a dress that comes in sort of a wrap version for that will be perfect. And Conway 23 says, one must have item for hourglass figures and one must have item that is quirky. Ooh. Okay, one must have item that's quirky. I would say to do it in like a funny or fun like accessory or bag. That's where I like a lot of my quirky items to be. Um, I think that they're just really bold staples that you can contribute to any kind of look if they're in an accessory rather than like a shirt or something like that. So that's where I like quirky items. I really, really love like over the top shoes or handbags especially. So that's where I would do a quirky like item. And then a must have item for an hourglass figure, I think is a well-fitting blazer. You cannot go wrong with that. And it's one of the harder, harder sorry, items to find properly and just makes an hourglass look so good. Teacup Tia, Tia, Teacup Tia, I think is the name, says, my question, how do you deal with negativity and criticism online? I thought that was such a good question. Um, most of everything I receive online is always like really positive. I mean, you guys are so awesome, but I do get really random comments every now and then, um, or people that I think are trying to dig at me. 
And for most part, yeah, I know it sounds so simple, but you'd have to slough it off. And that was something that was really hard for me because I really internalized things. So I found it really difficult to do that, especially when I first started out on YouTube and with blogging and banging on television, I found it really difficult. Um, like I said, most of the things I've received have always been a lot of love, but you do get the odd stupid comment from people out there. So um, if it's on YouTube, for example, often I delete it and you guys won't even see it. Um, or if I'm feeling sassy, because most of the time I don't take a lot of BS from people, um, I will have a quick quip to whip back at them because I do have a bit of a sharp tongue. But um, for most part, I find that it's not worth feeding into the negativity of things and um, it's just better to ignore them. I know it sounds simple, but the more you ignore it and embrace and focus on all the love and great things around you, the easier it'll be to get over stuff like that. And if it makes you feel shitty, like if you're having a lot of negativity or something online, then either block that feed if it's your social feed. Um, just block it if you don't want to read it or start like unfollowing people on like Facebook and whatnot. I know that I have done that with Facebook, especially like it just has such a like social dump of like links and like random thoughts from people. And as much as I like it, I do find it kind of weighs my mind down. So I started unfollowing people, not unfriending them just so that my newsfeed was filled with things that I found inspiring and things that made me more focused and unlifted during the day because it's my feed. So I will do what I want with it. And I really highly suggest that for anyone else that feels bogged down, down sorry, by their social channels, sometimes that's the best way to go about it. Curate your feed. <laughs> uh, Green Bijou says, I would like to know your favorite mascaras for no clumping. Holy Grail, one of them is the um, Lancome De Fossil Mascara. It's one of their old school ones. It's been around for ages, but does such a good job. It's a favorite of mine. I also really love the L'Oreal Voluminous for a drugstore option. Those are two of my definite faves. S Monica, S Monica. I think that's how you say her name. Personal question, favorite wine of yours? Oh, damn, I don't know. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I'm going to say that I really like the Behringer Cabernet Sauvignon just because it's just got like a flat matte white label. And it's not like an overly expensive wine, but I like it because I had gone to Napa Valley to the Behringer Winery or the Vineyard, sorry. And I had a really fantastic time there. And that was one of the wines I tried while on their grounds. And every time I pop the cork on that one, I just find that it sort of takes me back to that. And I just love the full bodiness of that wine. It's so good. Three, I think it's Shelly. It's Shelly P is the name. Um, best way to organize a closet, seasonal by color. What's the best on hangers and what's best in drawers? So on hangers, blouses, um, t-shirts, uh, blazers, things like that. Anything that's knitwear or like more of a cotton style knitwear should definitely be in a drawer because the shoulders will stretch out if you leave it on a hanger and you'll damage your clothing. So if you want longevity and if you want your items to keep their shape, definitely stuff those in a drawer. And the same thing goes with anything that has more structure or more blousiness to it. Put that on a hanger because again, you want to make sure that they keep their shape and their beautiful structure so that when you put it on, it still looks really, really nice on you. Um, in terms of organizing your closet, it's a bit of a loaded question, but I always find by type and by color is the best way to organize things. So put all your shirts together and organize those by colors, put all your blouses together, organize those by color, and then do the same thing with your pants. And I find that's the best way. Mary M, 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 A, M, A. I'm sorry if I mispronounced anybody's names. Mary M, A. Um, asks, how long have you and your husband been together? So Sean and I have been married for almost six years. Is it six now? Yeah, we've almost been married for six years, um, but we have been dating for almost 15. Uh, Scion asks, uh, my favorite toy as a kid. Um, my favorite toy as a kid was actually a funny story. I was a child that sucked her thumb like you would not believe, and my parents could not get me to stop doing it. And when I was a child and they couldn't get me to stop doing that, my parents had said to me that if I would stop sucking my thumb for two weeks to get me out of the habit of it, that I could pick out any toy I wanted as like a reward for stop stopping sucking my thumb. And so I did it, I was able to conquer that. And the toy that I wanted, like I think they were worried that I was gonna pick out this like really crazy expensive toy. And I ended up picking out this Go-Go My Walking Pup, <laughs> which was this like $20, white Maltese looking dog on wheels. So it was like a re you had the remote control on the leash and it would only go forward and backwards. But I loved that thing. And I was so happy and like proud to march up and down my street as a kid and like walk the remote control dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, but it was the best toy ever. I loved it so much. Uh, Scion also asked, what is my favorite shoe? Hmm. My favorite shoe has to be my Sophia Webster's I showed you guys in my designer shoe collection. It's a white crisp pump with like this really beautiful flower detail. I know you guys have seen it in a couple of my videos recently, um, but I'll link my designer shoe collection down below in case you guys are interested and you can check them out there. Helen A asks, my best or favorite vacation spot? So I have been on limited vacations in terms of like the amount of areas that I've traveled. Most of my um, experience traveling has been either in the Caribbean or the US. I have not been to Europe or something. So I think if I had been to Europe, that would probably want to be, that would probably be, sorry, one of my favorite destinations. However, um, I'm going to say that my favorite spot is Hilton Head Island off of South Carolina. It has been a long time favorite. I go there every year if I can for at least a week. And I have done that since I was three years old with my family. That's how I started going down there. It is the best vacation spot. It's so beautiful there. It's small, but it's not too small. Um, but it's also not oversized. They just have a ton of stuff to do. The shopping's fantastic. The views are breathtaking. Um, and the weather's always perfect. I so love it down there. Definitely hands down my favorite vacation spot. Camille, I think that's how you say the name. Camille, um, what made you start your YouTube? So <laughs> you guys, will I have been on YouTube for a while, um, but I don't think I started taking my channel seriously, like really until last year. Um, I was very haphazard with my videos for the longest time. And um, I started my channel, I think it was six years ago, and I didn't really know what YouTube was. Uh, it was when I was first sort of experimenting with my business in like the social digital world aspect of things. And I made just a couple of videos on color analysis and foundation colors. And I had no idea what YouTube was. I didn't know that there were like little channels. I didn't even know how to properly film a video. And I think my first video and editing took me literally like eight or nine hours. And I remember like freaking out at my computer because I was so angry because I didn't know how to make everything work. And I didn't really know how people were gonna find my video anyway. I know my first one did well, um, but so random. Like it just, I look feel like a different person when I watch back that video. And uh, yeah, that was sort of why I started. It was more for a business related thing. And now it's more of as a creative outlet. Next question is, do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. I have uh, two biological brothers, both which are younger than me. One is a year younger and one is 10 years younger, who came as a surprise, obviously. And then after my mom had passed away, my dad remarried. And I also have two stepbrothers that are also younger than me. So I am just surrounded by testosterone. I love my brothers. I think they're all awesome. But yeah, I have four brothers in total. H M I L L U. I don't even know what that stands for. I don't know if that's the name, sorry. Um, says, when do you think you should let go of a friendship? Um, that's a loaded question. I've actually been dealing with that myself. Um, I think if you are not valued as a friend, then that's the time where at least you should start thinking about letting go of a friendship. If your presence isn't valued or noticed, then your absence won't be either. And I know people get busy, so, and like friendships are definitely not black and white, but I think that it's a two-way street for people to make something work. And I think that if you're the one that's constantly putting in all of the work or constantly asking someone to do something, um, then that to me is not okay. Um, I think that it should always be something where you both really enjoy your company. It feels like it's not a strained conversation when you get together. I think that it should just be a natural thing. Like you should want to see your friends and life definitely gets in the way. You don't have to be in contact with people 24 seven. But I think that if, you know, a friend is making more time to see others and never seems to reach out and make time, the same kind of time or commitment to you that they do with like their other friends and family, then to me, that's when I start to question things. I think that you should always treat others with kindness, be kind, be loving, and you will attract the right people around you. And if something feels forced and, you know, it just doesn't feel natural, then let that shit go. I know it's definitely hard, but I have let go of friendships in my life that were a little bit more negative or I found were stressing me out all of the time and they were the best decisions I ever made to let go of those relationships. And although it kind of sucks at the time, now I can definitely say I'm in a happier place as a result. I think the main thing is that if you start to question your value with somebody, I think that's a good time to reevaluate things because you should always feel supported and loved with your friends. Um, 
And if you don't, then that's when you have to question things, at least in my opinion. And last question that I'm gonna answer for today is, um, what is my favorite childhood memory? So for that, um, it wouldn't really be considered my childhood. It's more like when I was an adolescent, but prior to when I was a teenager and, or no, I wouldn't have been a teen. No, it's late adolescence. So I would have been around 19 because I was able to like drink. And I remember my mom and I had gone out to a restaurant with the rest of the family. We just had a gla couple glasses of wine and we were having dinner. We just had such a great time with the whole family. And I remember coming back from dinner that night and my mom and I were just in such a chatty mood, like she was my best friend. And I just remember we were so into our conversation that we were just standing in the middle of our my parents' hallway chatting. And we got so carried away that we ended up grabbing a bottle of wine. And instead of going to the couch, we just physically sat in the hallway and just continued our conversation where we were. And it was so simple but it was just one of those pure joy-filled moments that was just so honest and so pure and just really just being present in that moment with one another. And that for me is one of my all-time favorite memories. I just thought it was so precious. And now that she's passed away, it's become even more special to me. So yeah, that's, hands down my favorite memory. Anyway guys, that is it for my Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other questions or comments, anything like that, please leave them down below. I would love to answer all of them for you. It's really important to me that I answer all of my questions for you guys. So please hit me up down below or message me off social media. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it while watching it. Please don't forget to subscribe. And other than that, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you on Sunday. Mwah. See you soon.